Half a century ago, a major earthquake shocked all of humanity. This led to the appearance of dungeons all over the world and the monsters that inhabited them. It was quite difficult to destroy these monsters as they were not affected by conventional weapons. Only a select few could resist, as they were the ones who possessed the supernatural power called mastery. Possessors of this power could raise their levels and as a result, improve themselves to incredible heights. These people inspired both fear and respect. So over time they became known as the Awakened Ones. Kisaragi Tsukasa possessed level 4, and his skill was imitation. With these abilities, it was quite difficult for the guy to resist monsters. He had to spend a lot of energy even to do minor damage. The ability of his skill was that he could obtain the skill of an opponent after making physical contact with them. It could only be used once. That was why the emu often failed to use his skill. And in one of the battles, he was ready to take a serious blow from the opponent. Suddenly the guy saw a big fireball that destroyed all the monsters and thus saved Tsukasa. At first he didn't realize what was happening. Then he saw Todo Kakeru in front of him, who was considered the star of the next generation of Awakened Ones. Todo had reached the 15th level of mastery and was a flame lord. Therefore, destroying all of these monsters was no problem for him. Mastery begins to manifest in a separate group of people during the first appearance in the dungeons. It is also an advantage of the Awakened to be able to change their rank. Toto was being arrogant, so he ordered Tsukasu to get up and get busy looking for magic stones. The Flame Lord skill that Toto possessed was considered unusually powerful and allowed him to control fire at will. Tsukasu began to gather stones with frustration inside as he was disappointed in his skill. It was extremely rare for him to be able to use it due to the difficulty of using it, so he considered it simply worthless. Toto's friends began to mock Tsukasu and thought he was simply useless. Yoshimura Riku and Inu Hayato possessed 10th and 11th level skills. Toto asked the guys not to do that, emphasizing that they were all friends. But he could read the irony in his words. He advised Tsukasu to just try to make the most of his goofy skill. In such moments, the young man always remembered his sister Kirasagi Mayu, because it was only for her sake that he decided to become an adventurer and had to endure bullying. It was all for the sake of an elixir that could save the girl's life for she had had a severe illness since childhood. Yoshimura and Inoue decided to inquire about their plans for the day. Toto replied that they would go to the very lair of the monsters. He longed to take all their treasures for himself. Using his skill, he was able to kill a large number of goblins and thus raised his level to 16th. Tsukasa was overcome with despair. He had to kill monsters in order to level up, and he could barely deal with any of them alone. Even if he continues to fight monsters in this company, he still won't get any experience, because only his buddies will kill everyone. After walking for a while, the guys were able to reach the deepest part of the dungeon, an endless amount of treasures shone in front of them. Tsukasu watched as Yoshimura and Inu rejoiced and showered themselves with gold. But that wasn't enough for Toto. He walked over to the wall and using his powers started crushing the walls. He was looking for something. Suddenly, a powerful explosion rang out and rocks flew apart. Behind them was the door to the secret room. Todu couldn't believe he'd found it. Usually these rooms were filled with various valuable and powerful items. Finding such a room was coveted by any adventurer, as these items can increase the strength of anyone by as much as cannot even be imagined. But there was a downside. Very often there were many dangerous traps in such places. To fall into a trap was to die immediately. The guys couldn't wait to go through those doors and find out what was behind them. But the fact that there were traps was very intimidating. Toto reassured his comrades by saying that he had a great idea for that. Tsukasu at this moment continued to search for magic stones. Gold and items were of no concern to him. Suddenly Toto approached him from behind and suddenly gave him a strong blow. The boy immediately fell off his feet. He didn't expect this at all and didn't understand what was happening. Toto grabbed Kisaragi by the throat, apologizing, and said there was a job for him. He was blinded by greed. And then Toto added that Tsukasu should die for him and his comrades. Kisaragi was filled with fear. He couldn't believe it, but he couldn't do anything about it because he wasn't strong enough. Yoshimura and Inu asked if Toto was really going to use Tsukasa to set the traps. They didn't expect such a thing and thought it was a mean thing to do. But Toto wasn't deterred by that. He replied that in this way he would simply recycle the useless garbage. The guys didn't mind, because it was in their best interest as well. So they threw Tsukasa out the door. They hoped to receive magic items very soon and jokingly thanked him. Toto laughingly added that they would definitely meet again if he survived. Kisaragi was unusually angry. His only desire was revenge against his comrades, but he couldn't resist them. The door slammed shut, and suddenly a bright glow came from nowhere. The boy didn't know what it was. 
He could barely open his eyes to see what it was. But it was all useless. He was just blinded. Later, the room became fully lit, and Tsukasu was finally able to get a good look around. He wondered what kind of room it was. Suddenly he felt someone's presence, and later he saw the silhouette of a beast. It frightened him a lot. Then he saw that it was Fenrir, a level 80 God Eater. Each dungeon has its own rank. Beginning, intermediate, advanced, and mythical. It was in the latter that Kisaragi found himself, but he didn't plan on giving up. After all, a long time ago, he had lost both of his parents on the same day. Mayu was the only family he had left. It was for her sake that he continued to fight. He was determined to fight and was determined to stay alive at all costs. Tsukasu gathered all his courage into a fist and struck his opponent first. The God Slayer was several times the guy's size and much stronger, but that didn't stop him. But to Fenrir, the one was just a toy and he had no trouble inflicting serious damage on Kisaragi. After only a couple minutes, Tsukasu was exhausted and thought that this was where and how the end of his life would come. Fenrir had no plans to let the guy live and was coming closer and closer. At that moment, Tsukasu thought of Mayu. He thought of himself as a pathetic brother who couldn't take care of his sister. With his last strength he rose to his feet and was about to continue the fight, realizing that he would not be able to survive it. Suddenly, light shone back into the room and an unfamiliar voice ordered Fenrir to sit. The guy couldn't believe there was anyone who could subdue this beast. Afterwards, someone's footsteps were heard, and it was clear from the clatter of their heels that it was a girl. The tapping of the heels grew louder and louder. The girl praised Fenrir, and asked him to treat her guest more politely. Soon Tsukasu saw a young attractive girl in front of him. She seemed very nice in appearance. She welcomed the boy into her castle. Kisaragi didn't understand anything at all. He wondered who this girl was. He inquired as to her name, but she ignored the question. The girl regarded the boy and was surprised at his condition as he seemed much weaker, but that wasn't enough for her. The stranger came very close and touched Tsukasu's cheek with her hand. An extraordinary light was emitted from her. The boy asked what it was, and the girl whispered in his ear that it was a gift. A powerful magic began to emanate from her body and filled the space around her. It passed through Tsukasa, and he felt an incredible surge of strength run through his body with an electric current. His mana level increased instantly. From level 4, Kisaragi rose to level 25. His skill is now copycat. After that, the stranger stepped away from the guy and got ready to leave, but Tsukasu demanded an explanation from her. He didn't understand why she had given him so much mana. In a quiet voice, she replied that now he would be able to overpower him and would one day leave this mythical dungeon. After that, the girl seemed to vaporize, leaving behind only a slight magical glow. Finrir woke up at the same hour and headed towards the boy. He couldn't believe he could defeat the monster as before. But unexpectedly for himself, he was able to activate his new skill Copycat and stop the enemy's attack. While contacting him, Tsukasu also received his skill. But Kurosagi still didn't have a plan to help defeat Fenrar. He watched the magic power transfer from the monster to him. It was only after that that it came to Tsukasu's attention that he had mastered the skill of a god eater. This skill allowed you to envelop the user's body with the might of the gods and maximize physical abilities for one minute. Tsukasu realized that he now had a chance of winning this battle, but since it will only last a minute, he needs to pick the most opportune moment. When Fenrir attacked Tsukasa, he felt a power within him that he had never experienced before. His body seemed very light, and he could react to attacks much faster. Kirasagi was still surprised that he was able to gain the skill of his opponent Fenrir. His new skill Mimic gave a 100% chance of getting the opponent's skill, unlike his previous skill, Imitate. But suddenly, Tsukasu found it very difficult to breathe. The opponent used the power of the Divine Wolf on him, which limited his mobility. After a moment, the guy had mastered that skill as well, and planned to put it to the test. In the same hour, Fenrir grew several times larger. He was incredibly powerful. Tsukasu didn't know how to proceed. It seemed to him that victory was about to be in his pocket. The monster kept attacking the guy. He became more and more fierce and angry. Kirasagi realized that he wouldn't survive if he was hit by even one such blow. He acted cautiously and tried to dodge, for as yet he did not know how to proceed. Meanwhile, it could be seen that Fenrir was gathering strength to use another of his skills. When Tsukasu saw the power of this skill, he wanted to take it for himself. It seemed like a good idea, but too risky. Then he decided to use the Heavenly Power skill which would envelop his body with the magic of the gods and increase his physical abilities for a moment. With this skill, he had a better chance, and Tsukasu decided to go all the way, and he succeeded. Kirasagi had mastered his opponent's new skill, 
Van Argande. His entire body was enveloped in magical power. He was ready to do anything to win. He only had 60 seconds to deal with the enemy, and he planned to make the most of that time. He gathered all his rage and anger and began to strike one after another. For Tsukasu, this was the hour of reckoning. There were 30 seconds left before the skill expired, and he was overflowing with power and continued to attack the enemy. Despite being a powerful creature, it was becoming increasingly difficult for Fangrir to withstand the attacks. Tsukasu's goal was to destroy the enemy before the skill's time expired. He decided that he would beat him to a pulp with the Van Argan skill. The difference in levels made it difficult for Tsukasu to reach his opponent at such a distance. So he decided to strike directly. It was as if Fanrir knew he was in grave danger, so he didn't stop attacking the guy and delivering his magical blows. Tsukasu only had nine seconds left before the skill expired. The monster kept using strongholds and the guy was afraid his plan wouldn't work. He turned as best he could from the fiery flames emanating from Fanrir. And with only six seconds left, he decided that now was the time to act. He waited a moment between the monster's attacks as it gained strength for another attack. And ahead of him he struck first. Time was running out. Fanrir had not expected such an attack at all. He was able to take serious damage. His eye was bleeding. And while the monster was recovering from the previous attack, Tsukasu approached the enemy right and close. Kirasagi was determined to end it all right now. He wouldn't have another opportunity like this. Tsukasu had gotten other skills from his opponent. He only had one second of time left to kill him. He was about ready to stab his enemy in the eye when suddenly a familiar voice ordered him to stop. It was the same girl who had given him so much mana. Suddenly the monster calmed down, and the girl noted that this fight had been great, but now it was time to take a break. Tsukasu didn't realize what it was, and asked the girl what was going on here. She replied in an unhurried voice that this play was just to kill time. She can be very bored, as not all adventurers manage to get into this room. If they do, Fenrir kills them immediately. She didn't even expect a guy like Tsukasu to get here. Then the girl came closer with a request. She'd been wanting to get to know the outside world for a long time, and she wanted Kirasagi to help her do it. Since the outside world consisted of a huge number of particles, she was not free to explore it. She offered Tsukasu cooperation, and he couldn't refuse. The girl didn't even expect that it would be so simple, and he would agree to help so immediately. Tsukasu had many things unsaid, and didn't trust the stranger. But thanks to her, he was able to defeat Fenrir. He also realized that he could benefit from this cooperation. But he still had questions. But suddenly, Tsukasu abruptly fell exhausted into the girl's arms. He had used up a lot of energy. The only thing he had time to ask afterward was what the stranger's name was. The girl replied with a little embarrassment that the name was Loki, and she was looking forward to working with Kirasagi. That was the last thing he heard as he looked forward to working with Tsukasu. After that, he fell into a deep sleep. Opening his eyes, the first thing Kirasagi saw was a ceiling unfamiliar to him. When he looked around, he didn't realize where he was. Everything seemed unfamiliar. Suddenly he heard someone's voice. The unfamiliar girl was next to him in the room. She was glad Tsukasu was finally awake, and wondered how he was feeling. Kirasagi scrutinized the girl. He wondered who it could be, so he asked her name. She wondered with surprise if he had managed to forget her. Tsukasu took another closer look, and then realized it was Loki-san. To confirm his guess, he asked her name again. The girl replied that there was no need to address her so respectfully, you could just call her Loki. She was bored out of her mind waiting for the boy to wake up. She wanted to have some fun in the outside world. Kirasagi asked to tell what happened to him after he fainted. Loki revealed that she took his body with her and they traveled to the initial rank dungeon. The guy was wondering how he got to the hospital then. Turns out the girl left Kirasagi's body in that dungeon, and an adventurer found him and brought him to the hospital. Tsukasa wondered why Loki had never been to the outside world if she had the teleportation skill. It was all because she was a goddess, and she required a huge amount of mana to maintain her true form. And since there is very little of it in the outside world, Loki can only appear here in immature form. Kirasagi realized that in that case, she wouldn't be able to travel freely. She would be taken away by the police for protection. That's when Loki decided she needed Tsukasa, so she helped him. From the footsteps in the hallway, it was clear that someone was approaching the boy's room. Loki decided to leave him, adding that she is not so uneducated to meddle in his family affairs. After which, she disappeared from the room with the help of magic, leaving no trace of her stay. Suddenly the door opened and a frightened girl entered the room. Kirasagi recognized the young girl. It was his younger sister, Mayu. She didn't wait long and immediately threw herself into her brother's arms. He made her very nervous. Mayu could hardly hold back her tears as Tsukasa had been in a coma for a week. 
According to the doctor, he might not wake up at all. The guy was happy to see his sister, and began to reassure her at once. After all, everything was fine now. He apologized for making Maya so worried. He knew his sister was very afraid of losing him too. After all, they had no one but each other. Tsukasa promised that he would always be there for them. Mei felt immediately relieved. She was glad to hear her brother say that. The girl managed to escape for only a short time, so she was forced to leave Tsukasa. Her brother was amused by her naivete, but he was worried about her taking care of herself because of her illness. As soon as the door slammed shut, at the same moment Loki appeared out of nowhere in the room. Kirasagi told me that a sister named Mayu had visited him, that she was the only dear person he had left. He added that Mayu has been sick since birth, with a very serious illness. They had been to many doctors and all said there was no cure for this disease. Kirasagi then decided that he would go down into the dungeon to get a medicine that could cure any disease. At this point, Loki interrupted the boy. She didn't want to upset him, but she had to say that no medicine could cure this disease. Tsukasa couldn't believe what he was hearing. He had lost his last hope. The girl added that Mayu's illness was most likely caused by the dungeon curse, and to cast such a curse requires a high level of skill. Loki doesn't know someone who could do such a thing, but it's definitely of mythic rank, like herself. Kirasagi suggested that in that case, the way to remove this curse would be to kill the one who placed it. Loki nodded in response, letting the boy know that his assumptions were correct. Then the guy replied firmly that he was going to deal with the god who cursed Maya and cure her. He asked Loki if she would help him in this matter, as he realized that he would definitely not be able to do it on his own. The girl agreed without a second thought because she was also interested. In that case, they need to go down to the dungeon every day to train. Since the guy needed more experience to challenge a mythic rank dungeon, Kirasagi would love to do that. But he had to go to school every day. Loki didn't know what it was. Tsukasa said that it was an institution that all awakened people who were going to become adventurers attended. But he promised that he would make time to practice with his girlfriend, since they were now a team. Three days later, they went to Upia to the dungeon management organization. But unfortunately, they were forbidden to go down into the dungeon alone due to the difference in levels. When working independently, they were advised to fight monsters that were a level lower than them. When the adventurer encounters a higher level monster, the danger increases dramatically. At the moment, Kirasagi was at the fourth level according to the documents. And all the monsters that are in the initial dungeon are at least level 5. The difference is small, but for safety reasons, they couldn't be missed. Loki was very pleased with this course of action. In her mind, she was ready to grind the counselor into mincemeat. Tsukasa asked his friend to calm down. After all, he couldn't show his real papers in order to be let through. The last time he had gone down to the dungeon his level had been much lower. If someone found out how he'd raised it, he'd be in trouble for sure. Loki then suggested that the guy not argue, but use his new skill, wordplay, for their purposes. It was forbidden to use his abilities in this place, but Kirasagi decided to take a chance. This was a skill he had only recently learned, and had not practiced it before. He was terribly worried, but he still dared to approach and ask for a pass once more. Kirasagi activated the wordplay skill and asked if it was possible to go down alone. The girl opposite yielded to his force and asked if she could see his papers in order to accept the request. Tsukasa was very worried so that no one would find out that he had used the skill in a forbidden place. But Loki reassured him that everything would be fine, as it was the skill of the gods. At this moment, Kirasagi realized that he had greatly underestimated Loki-sama. Based on the situation, he assumed the girl had respect for him. As a result, they were still given access and went to the gate that moves to any dungeon. Through this gate, one is free to come and go as one pleases. The map scan was successful, and it wasn't long before the gate should open. Kirasagi was ready to conquer any dungeon and kill all the monsters. The main thing is that it works. Mayu's curse is broken and she finally lives a normal life. He decided he would even kill a god for his sister. The heroes quickly moved to the first floor. The name was Goblin's Lair. Loki inquired as to what they planned to do with the place. Kirasagi replied that he wanted to test how far he could go. He didn't have to wait long. A couple minutes later, a hostile goblin was in front of them. He wielded a level 5. Tsukasa decided he would be perfect for warming up. Since the guy was on 25, he didn't doubt himself at all. Therefore, without a second thought, he immediately went to attack the goblin. Using his skill, Kirasagi was able to strike quickly and accurately. In this fight, Tsukasa was able to take down his opponent without any unnecessary movement with a single punch. Loki decided to shame the guy. After all, for his level, such opponents did not constitute any danger. So there was no reason to be too happy. But for Kirasagi, this was a special fight. It was the first time he was able to defeat someone alone. 
although he himself realized that with his level, he had no equal in this dungeon. The reason he had risen so quickly to level 25 was because Loki had rewarded him with a large amount of mana. Thanks to this, he can now destroy goblins, though he couldn't dream of it before. He turned to the girl and thanked her profusely for such a gift, and said that he was now in her debt. Loki was pleased to hear that. Then she asked what they would do next. Kirasagi replied that it was now necessary to move further into the depths of the dungeon. His goal was the boss's room. He was willing to overcome any obstacle to get there. Soon they reached the fifth floor in the goblin's lair. Loki admitted that she was very bored being in this place. Kirasagi wondered if she had expected anything different. The girl replied that she expected a terrific battle that would make her blood boil in her veins. But as it turned out, many monsters couldn't even be called Tsukasi's opponents. Suddenly they saw a crowd of goblins. Loki was glad that the ringleaders had finally decided to show themselves. The number of goblins was huge. It meant that the master's room was somewhere nearby. Kirasaga didn't hesitate and immediately chopped off the head of one of his opponents. He was confident that the first move would win him this battle. After that, he started killing the enemies one by one without any stopping. He realized that even in this form, he could easily handle a large number of goblins. Tsukasi was initially worried about whether he could join the fight, but it turned out to be like a walk in the park for him. But despite how many opponents the guy killed, they weren't getting fewer. Suddenly Kirasaga saw another huge tolka of goblins arriving. But that didn't scare him. The boy decided to use another of his new skills. Loki was shocked at what was happening and told Tsukasa to stop immediately. But he paid no attention to her and activated one of his most powerful skills, Vanargard. His power was so strong that he could easily collapse the walls of the dungeon. Kirasaga rejoiced like a child. To him, it seemed like entertainment. But suddenly agony seized him. The boy didn't understand what was wrong. Just a second ago, he had been feeling great. And now he was having trouble not just fighting, but difficulty standing on his feet or breathing. Now he understood why Loki had asked him to stop and not use so much mana. This was the price for using divine techniques in his weak human body. He couldn't use Fenrir's mastery until he used the heavenly power. But it was causing great damage to his body. That is why Loki has decided to ban the use of celestial power as well as the other skills gained from Fenrir from now on. Tsukasa was shocked that she had sealed all of his best skills. She did this with the intent that the guy would not rely heavily on his trump cards. That's why it's a trump card, to save it for the end. Kirasaga replied that that was why he disliked cheaters. They finally made it all the way through and found themselves at the entrance to the main goblin. The gate seemed very unusual to Tsukasa. The goblin king is the final boss in the goblin lair. His skill was summoning subordinates, which allowed him to endlessly summon new goblins. For an awakened man, defeating his boss was a confirmation that he had what he needed. So Tsukasa was determined to defeat him. In a friend, the gate swung open before them. Kirasaga was eager to meet the chief goblin. Once inside, he was even a little surprised to see the boss. He was acting suspiciously calm. He didn't seem to expect much from his guests and even thought they were scared. Tsukasa really didn't like this. He didn't want to stall and immediately reached for his weapon. From the goblin boss's demeanor, it was obvious that the battle would begin very soon. He was very big and strong. His skill was of the 15th level. In a moment, it was clear that the main boss had managed to summon his subordinates. A great many of them had arrived. And a second later, they were all led by the boss, roaring off to attack. Kirasaga thought that compared to Fenrir, they were of no importance. So he would handle them on his own and very quickly. The head goblin was full of anger and rage. He longed for Kirasagi's death, and his subordinates were ready to help him and tear the young man to pieces. Loki purposely provoked and supported all the goblins. She just decided to give the guy a good test. Kirasagi was simply dumbfounded at this turn of events. He hadn't expected Loki to do such a thing. The goblin boss approached practically right next to him. He looked like he was showing his power and strength. Loki noticed that Tsukasa would have to try her best to get what she wanted. In a moment, the goblins got an order from their ringleader and snarled all at the guy. He retaliated with all his top speed and headed towards them. Loki watched everything with the thought that if the guy couldn't handle the goblins without using celestial power, then he was just as unsuitable to execute her plan. The goblins surrounded Kirasaga on all sides. The advantage was clearly on their side, but Tsukasa was not intimidated. He struck with precision and confidence at anyone he could get his hands on. One by one, the opponents were blown to pieces by his blows, but he could no longer interrupt them one by one because of Loki's prohibition against using celestial power. In addition, the head goblin didn't miss an opportunity and used his skill to the fullest. His subordinates were arriving in droves. There seemed to be no end to them. 
Kurosaga realized that if he didn't defeat the goblins, it was fighting a battle knowingly lost. Tsukasa then decided to seal his skill so he wouldn't cause such trouble anymore. He activated the wordplay skill and ordered the goblin not to use any of his skills anymore. At the same moment, he was shackled with magical chains. He was just furious. But just a few seconds later, he was able to free himself without much effort. As if nothing had happened, he continued to strike Kurosaga one after another. The guy wondered why his wordplay skill didn't work. Loki appreciated such an action by Kurosagi, saying that it was a good idea, and it would have worked if she hadn't given the goblin rage status. It was then that Tsukasa realized that the Goblin King's skill could not be sealed. He never stopped urging his subordinates. It seemed impossible to win. Loki reminded the guy that his real enemy is a god, so he has to find a way out of this situation. Loki was right. Tsukasa once again thought of his sister Mayu. The one who put the curse on her is also a magic rank dungeon master. If his ceiling is as it is now, he'll never be able to save his sister. His mood had completely changed. He was ready to continue the battle. Kirisaga used his power and began again killing the goblins one by one without stopping, but his main target was still the Goblin King. Based on the situation, the one also realized that most likely the goblins couldn't manage on their own, and he too would have to fight the guy. Tsukasa wreaked so much confidence and lust for victory that the boss even began to feel a little nervous. The Goblin King used to the best of his skill to summon as many goblins as possible when he saw the guy getting closer and closer. As a result, Kurosaga decided to take his skill of summoning subordinates for himself. And when he mastered it, he activated it immediately without any hesitation. Suddenly all the goblins stopped. They did not expect this and waited to see what would happen next. Tsukasa couldn't stop calling for help. He wondered who it would be. A friend had a cute little creature run up to his feet. It began rubbing at Kurosagi's feet and didn't look like it could fight in battle at all. Loki was dying with laughter when she saw Tsukasa's face at that moment. He recognized it as the same Fenrir he had fought in the mythical dungeon. It was small, but the resemblance was obvious. There was also loud laughter coming from the crowd of goblins. Fenrir noticed it, and in a second, he had already attacked the enemies using his skill. Flames engulfed the whole place. Kurosagi hadn't expected this from little Fenrir, but he liked what was happening, and the fact that this little creature was on his side. This time he saw Fenrir not as an adversary but as an ally. He confirmed his behavior that he was ready to continue fighting for Tsukasa's interests. Then Kurosaga decided that pro Fenrir would deal with a bunch of inconsiderate goblins. He himself will go up against the Goblin King one-on-one. -on -one. Toth was ready to take on the challenge from the guy, so raring to meet him. He had a good skill set and was quite a strong opponent. But Tsukasa was not going to back down and attacked him back with all his strength. With all his might, the boy struck the goblin in the leg with his sword. The blow was so strong that the king fell off his feet at once. The crown fell from his head. In the meantime, Fenrir had dealt with all the goblins. The boss had no time to summon new ones. Tsukasa was preparing to strike a decisive blow. It was already clear that victory was in his hands. He got even closer and delivered another blow to the goblin king. Kurosaga decided not to drag this out and deal with it faster by engaging Fenrir, but it was his strike that was decisive. Tsukasa plunged his sword into the goblin's head. There was practically nothing left of the enemy. The boy gladly picked up the Magisek stone and clutched it tightly in his hand. Loki turned to him and said that using a subordinate summoning beat was a good idea. But he shouldn't be arrogant because he defeated an initial ranked dungeon master. Tsukasa understood that. Even though it was a starting rank, he could handle it alone. He decided that this was just the beginning, and there was no way he was going to do it for Mayu. After hearing that, Loki reminded her of one more thing. The baby had to be named something. Kurosaga remembered that indeed he had a little friend now. He thought for a moment. And then the thought of naming came into his head, that henceforth his name would be Lufin. He wasn't worth freezing with a new name, and just beat the name Fenrir. Afterward, Tsukasa noticed that it was already time to go back. He offered to sell the stone and buy something tasty for Mayu. Loki chased after them. She had a sweet tooth, it turned out. When Tsukasa returned to the department, they were surprised that he was able to clear the dungeon alone. Then, with a satisfied face, he placed the magic stones on the table as proof. He added that he would like to exchange them for cash. The girl opposite seemed very surprised while she did so. The question on her face was how he was able to do this with his fourth level. On his way home, he saw a crowd. That meant something interesting was happening nearby. This piqued the guy's interest as well, and he decided to move closer to have a look. Toto-san and his cronies could be seen through the crowd. He seemed extremely confident as always. There was a girl standing next to them. Todu invited her to join his company. Turns out that girl was Kachigan. Everyone knew her. 
Hoshigan Rin. She woke up as number one. The girl immediately replied to Todu that she was not interested in the proposal. Suddenly Kirasaga couldn't help himself, and said with a smile in his voice that the girl's answer was rude. Hoshigan wanted to say something else to Todo, but Tsukasa's words distracted her and she looked back into the crowd. At the same moment Todo and his cronies turned their heads and could not believe their eyes, for before them was Kirasaga. Tsukasa fidgeted, for he wanted to remain inconspicuous, but it failed due to his stupidity. He decided to leave right away without further conversation, but Hoshigan asked him to stay. He decided to stay, saying that he had not expected to see her here, and she replied that for her this meeting was quite expected. It turned out that she had only come to this place to see Kirasagi. The girl received a call from the receptionist informing her that there was a level 4 awakened who had managed to clear the dungeon single-handedly. She looked the guy straight in the eye and asked if he knew who she was talking about. Hoshigan Rin studies in the same class as Kirasaga and Todo, and is the best among the students of Tengetsu Academy, a school for the awakened. If you add to that her attractive looks, the media would be ecstatic. But Tsukasa thought of her as just a girl who was out of his league. The guy was thrown into a fever after Hashigan asked if he knew who he was talking about. He decided that the administrator had realized everything after the wordplay skill had expired. In his opinion, such an action was a mistake. Hoshigan didn't back down and asked the guy to show his card. At this moment, Tsukasa was even more frightened. He didn't know how to act and just stood there silently. The girl pounced on him even more and asked him to show the card immediately if he had nothing to hide. Tsukasa was overcome by two feelings. He said that he would show the document after all. Then he reached into his pocket and leisurely began to pull out a card. At that moment, Toto intervened in their conversation. And that turned out to be the boy's salvation. Kisaragi was the one he was interested in, so Toto began to approach him with his buddies. Tsukasa's mood changed dramatically. He became angry and wanted revenge. Toto walked up practically right next to him and said that he was glad to see Tsukasa and glad for the fact that he managed to get out of that dungeon. His buddies were similarly surprised but said they didn't expect anything else from one of their teammates. At this point, Kirasagi began to get even angrier. It took a lot of strength for him to restrain himself from lashing out at his former friends. From Tsukasa Hoshigan's reaction, she realized that something serious had happened between the guys. Toto then decided to ask the girl again if she wanted to join their team. According to him, they can become the strongest in all of Japan. But the girl paid no attention to Toto. She turned sharply to Kirasagi and asked to see his card again. Toto hadn't expected to be treated this way at all and stood in bewilderment. This time, Tsukasa couldn't turn away, and then decided to show his card. He took it out of his pocket and held it out to the girl. The girl's face seemed very surprised when she looked at it. It indicated that the guy was at level 15. But Hoshigan specifically said loudly that the card really belonged to Kirasagi, and he did pretty impressively in the dungeon alone. Toto and his friend's mouths dropped open at what they heard. They couldn't believe he had cleared the dungeon. She added that defeating the Goblin King seemed logical, as Kirasaga had increased his level significantly. She admitted that she underestimated the guy, and didn't realize he had so many hidden talents. Tsukasa stood silent. He realized his papers weren't real, and assumed it was Loki's credit. Then Toto became indignant, and said that Kirasagi was lying. He called him a loser, and demanded an explanation. Hoshigan looked at the man with a look of contempt. She was deeply angered by his words. She said it was impossible to forge a card and that was a known fact to everyone. The girl added that Kirasaga-san was now considered free since he was able to handle so many enemies in the dungeon. And then she asked if Tsukasa wanted to form a team with her and go down into the dungeon together sometime. Both Kirasaga and Toto were shocked at such an offer. After all, everyone could only dream of it. Toto didn't understand why Hoshigan had made that choice. He thought Tsukasa had just fooled her. He kept insisting that the girl accept his offer, and then they would easily handle an intermediate rank dungeon in place. But Hoshigan didn't want to listen to him. She thought Tsukasa would be a good partner, unlike Todo, who was always fooling around with his friends. Toward the end, she added that she never liked people like Todo-kun. Todo hadn't expected to hear such a thing. He couldn't contain his surprise. Then Hoshigan said, You know about the god he did. Her voice became angry and serious. Toto remembered how he and his friends had left Kirasagi alone in the dungeon, specifically to activate the traps. He lashed out at the guy with threats if he ever wanted to turn them into anyone. He was willing to kill Tsukasa in front of everyone just so he wouldn't say anything to anyone. But Kirasaga easily dodged his blow, and Toto simply flew off to the side. He couldn't accept that Hoshigan hadn't chosen him, and thought Tsukasu wanted to make a complete fool of him. Kirasaga tried to calm Toto down any way he could. He didn't want anyone else to get hurt but it was useless. He wasn't listening to anyone. 
He was driven by rage and anger. Suddenly, Hoshigan intervened in this showdown and attacked Toto. She threatened him, reminding him that it was forbidden to use the skill outside the dungeons. Toto hadn't expected this turn of events and blamed Kirasagi for everything. He was sure the boy was lying. But Hoshigan was on Tsukasa's side. She didn't believe Toto and continued to treat him with contempt. She took Kirasagi's hand and offered to leave and end this argument. It seemed silly and pointless to her. Tsukasa never thought Hoshigan would ever pay attention to him. He wondered where they were going. Toto watched them leave and vowed that he would never forget it and would surely take revenge on Kirasaga. He decided that he would make sure that Hoshigan belonged only to him, and he would do it at any cost. Meanwhile, Hoshigan and Tsukasa arrived at the Kobold settlement. It was an entry rank dungeon with a recommended level 15. Kirasagi still didn't understand what Hoshigan was aiming for. Did she really want to fight here alone? She told the guy not to worry and to just watch her fight to begin with. At this point, several kobolds were already approaching her and she was ready to fight back. Before Kirasagi could even blink an eye, Shihoshigan managed to take out several attacking enemies. He knew she had amazing skill, but had never seen it in action. He turned his attention to her weapon. He had no knowledge of the sword in question. As a new batch of kobolds approached with him, Hoshigan said it was Tsukasa's turn to show off his skills. He was ready to show what he was capable of, and immediately threw himself into the fight. He was much more confident now than before. He was much more confident now than before, and he was eager to make a good impression on the girl. But taking the fight to such an opponent turned out to be much more difficult than he had anticipated. Dodging the attacks was difficult, even without looking at his high-level skill. Hoshigan told him to keep his guard up, for kobolds are much smarter than goblins. Destroying this Varam could either be done by forcefully punching through the shield, or by making a false attack and slipping past it. Tsukasa heeded this advice, and was able to break through his opponent's shield more and more easily each time. The girl was pleased, for Kirasaga was stronger and better than she had anticipated. Hoshigan praised the guy for the way he behaved during the fight, and said she'd let him take care of the most important task. This challenge is located in front of the very room of the master of this dungeon. You must defeat the mini-hoster, specifically a general kobold. His skill was level 15. The girl suggested that it would be proper to begin by destroying his associates. Kirasaga fully endorsed the idea and began destroying the kobolds one by one. But there were a lot of them, and the general also took part in the battle. Then they realized that there was no point in killing their comrades in arms. Hoshigan asked Tsukasa what he would do in such a situation, and he replied that he would deal with the minor threats in one fell swoop and then focus on the main one. They immediately began to implement the plan. Kisaragi asked the girl if her guild was okay with them doing dungeon attacks together. She replied that there was no cause for concern, as she planned to leave this guild soon. Tsukasa had a lot of questions, but Hashigan said she would answer all of them after the fight. Right now, defeating the enemy was the priority. It wasn't long before she managed to get to the general and deliver the first serious blow to him. Kirasaga seeing this, he didn't want to be behind, and hurriedly approached the enemy to attack as well. He ran right up and punched the Cobalt General in the stomach with all his might. He cut open his stomach and told Hashigan that he would finish off the General himself. But in a moment, another crowd of subordinates came to his aid. Hoshigan freaked out horribly as they were just one step away from victory. Furious, she remembered Todu and his constant offers to join his team. She was angry and screamed that she would rather be all alone than accept his offer. Kirasaga realized that something had happened to the girl and wondered if she really wanted to leave her guild. He didn't expect Hoshigan to confirm his words. She couldn't leave the guild for nothing. She said that because she was in the guild, she had more troubles than benefits, which was why she could lose her temper so easily. And this cobalt battle is to relieve that stress. Her skill is a wide range of attacks, and it becomes much weaker against individual opponents, so Hoshigan suddenly decided to use her full power. Instantly, her power illuminated everything with a bright light and rained down a rain of fire on her opponents. The girl engaged a huge amount of skill and killed all the kobolds along with the general in a couple seconds. That was the power of the best. Only the boss remained. But before going to see him, Hoshigan offered a little break. She asked if Tsukasa knew about the great hero. The guy knew it was Mishigera Dojiro, and he was the first adventurer to clear a heroic rank dungeon in Japan. The girl replied that it was an old name. After he got married, he became Hoshigan. It was he who gave her this sword. My grandfather also told me how he had dangerous adventures with his comrades. Unrestricted by no one and nothing, she confessed that she dreams of also experiencing a fairy tale adventure one day. That was why Hoshigan wanted to leave the guild she belonged to and start her own. Then she looked at Tsukasa with a piercing gaze and asked him to lend her his power when the time came. 
The guy replied that he was all for it and would love to help her realize that dream. Hoshigan was glad to hear that. Then she said that it was time for them to go to the boss's lair. A short time later, they arrived at their destination. But suddenly, they felt someone's presence. Looking closer, they saw Toto and his company. They managed to sneak in first while Tsukasa and Hoshigan fought the kobolds and their general. Toto was filled with rage. It was obvious that they had been waiting in this place on purpose. From the expression on Toto's face and tone, Tsukasa realized that this meeting could end very badly for one of them. For Hoshigan, this meeting was a complete surprise. She asked Toto what he was doing here. Toto said that they had come to this dungeon for the purpose of helping their irreplaceable comrade. Tsukasas realized that Toto was talking nonsense, but he also didn't know the main purpose of his friend's stay in the dungeon. Hoshigan was more confused as to why Toto kept referring to Kirasagi as his comrade. He kept referring to Tsukasa as his reckless friend to save whom he even had to borrow equipment from his father. Hoshigan wondered if they were really planning to attack the boss considering she and Tsukasa were the ones who had defeated his subordinates, and accordingly, he was their priority. But according to the unofficial rules, the right to fight the boss is given to the adventurer who was able to get to him first. Toto figured it wouldn't be long before he and his team would show these two their true intentions. Hoshigan and Kisaragi stared back at Toto and his buddies with annoyance as they entered the gateway to the boss. Loki was watching everything that was happening on the monitor, and she didn't like Toto's antics at all. She wasn't going to let it go unchecked and he obviously had a plan in his head to take this guy down. Meanwhile, King Kobold was waiting for his guests. He was a level 20. Like the Goblin King, he possessed the skill Summoning Subordinates. But in addition to this skill, he also had the magic item Thunder Sword. Entering the room with the King Todu and his cronies didn't wait. They were sure that the three of them could deal with the boss very quickly. Toto immediately used his fire skill, and Hoshigan and Kirasagi watched from the side. As frustrating as it was, Toto was really strong and they realized that his team had a real chance of killing the Kobold King. Hoshigan didn't want to give up. She felt that this power should rightfully go to her. She asked Tsukasa for advice. Suddenly the boy heard a voice in his head that whispered for him to become a tyrant who could destroy everything in his path. Suddenly the Kobold King's level increased by five ranks, and he gained the madness skill. Toto didn't understand why his enemy's level had suddenly increased, but he didn't give up and continued to attack him. Toto decided to give his best. He was eager to win, to prove his strength to Hoshigan. But suddenly the enemy struck him with a blow of such force that he could not resist. Even Hoshigan was shocked at what was happening. She didn't understand how it was possible, and was even afraid for Todu. Tsukasa understood that this was Loki's doing. But he didn't understand why she chose to interfere in this. A voice already familiar to him answered that it was revenge for the deed of those who stood in his way. Toto lay exhausted, and the boss decided to get close to him to deliver the final blow. Seeing this, the boy realized that now his end might come. He was scared and defenseless. The kobold king enjoyed this moment and raised his sword upwards to finish the guy off. But Hoshigan couldn't let that happen. So she stood up to Toto's defense and fought off the boss's blow. His punch was very powerful, but that didn't stop the girl. She asked how the girl was doing, meaning Todu. Kisaragi saw that the one was in very bad shape and unlikely to be able to continue the fight or stand up for himself. The boss was totally furious but he enjoyed this battle. He thought he could kill his opponents without too much effort. Suddenly, Tsukasa told Hoshigan to take the wounded guy and get out of here, and he would try to deal with the boss alone. But Toto was in his repertoire and continued to taunt Kisaragi, saying that a little thing like him definitely couldn't handle it. But Hoshigan decided to listen to Kisaraga and get Toto and his cronies out of the dungeon. She said she trusted the guy but asked him not to overdo it. After leaving him, she added that she would hope the guy didn't do anything stupid. This moment was very crucial for Tsukasa. He didn't want to let Hoshigan down. The boy gathered all his strength and used his skill to summon his new little friend, Roof. He didn't have to wait long. In a few seconds, he was at his feet. Seeing this, Toto was out of his mind. He didn't understand how Tsukasa had such skill in summoning. Hoshigan was pleased by this fact and she thought Roof was very cute. Tsukasa was ready for the attack and had Rufu deal with the Kobold King. In response, he let it be known that he would gladly do that for Kirasagi. A few seconds later, Tsukasa's sword met with the boss's sword, and a powerful magical surge erupted from it. The guy decided he was going to go with a tactic of relentless attack. He struck one after another to prevent his opponent from gathering his strength. The tactic worked, and he managed to seriously wound the boss. His blood was everywhere. This made him even angrier, and he wanted to kill Kirasagi even more. Taking advantage of Tsukasa's moment, he was able to obtain the opponent's thunder sword skill. 
It was supposed to help him in battle. Thunder Sword enveloped the weapon with lightning, increased attack power, and also temporarily hindered the enemy. At that moment, Kisaragi decided to include Roof in the fight as well. He had been ready to come to the rescue for a long time and was just biding his time. He used Roof to attack the boss on his subordinates, but it still wasn't enough. And that's when Tsukasa activated his newly acquired Thunder Sword skill. Lightning had the advantage of being able to perform ranged attacks and stun the enemy. And while the Cobalt King was recovering from the magical blows he received, Tsukasa took the opportunity, moved in close, and stuck his sword into his chest. He understood that this blow should be the decisive one, and that this should end the fight in his favor. As a result, that's what happened. Hoshigan couldn't believe her eyes. Tsukasa approached her, and holding a magic stone in his hands, said that this king was finished. She was proud of the guy, but inside she realized she had no idea who he really was. Loki wondered if Tsukasa was really going to go to the academy. In her opinion, it would be better to go clean up the dungeons. The boy replied that that's why he would go to the academy. There, he could learn more information about dungeons. And maybe this way he can find a lead that will lead to whoever cursed Maya. But Loki disagreed. She thought that in order to get stronger, you had to train in the dungeons. After that, she decided to leave the guy, but promised to return, because communicating with them brought her pleasure. Meanwhile, Tsukasa went to Tengetsu Academy as planned. Upon entering the classroom, he immediately became the center of attention for everyone. Everyone was whispering behind his back. They thought Kisaragi was long dead or had been expelled. His classmates thought he was a bad adventurer. The boy realized that all the gossip was the work of Todu, who hated him. Suddenly he saw a girl. It was Hashigan. She came closer. And then in front of the whole class, she said hi to him and thanked him for yesterday. He responded by saying that he was not to be thanked, for it was a valuable experience for him. At the same second, the girl suggested going down to the dungeon of the Abode of the Dead. It was an intermediate level. Tsukasa realized that she suspected something and thought that he shouldn't have used his skill out in the open. The classmates didn't understand why Hoshigan was hanging out with Kirasagi, much less going down into the dungeons. The girl asked if Tsukasa would be free to go down to the dungeon after class. Suddenly there was complete silence in the classroom. Todu walked through the door, waiting to see what would happen next. Seeing that Tsukasa was in the classroom, he began to head towards him, asking what he was doing in this place. Hoshigan stepped up to the guy's defense, saying that Todo had no right to even talk to them. It was obvious to everyone in the class that there was a special tension hovering between them. Kirasagi was very afraid lest this turn into an altercation. In a rage, Todo challenged Tsukasa to a fight. He was eager to show everyone his true colors. The guy didn't understand why he wouldn't let him go. Todo pounced on Kirasagi with claims of whether or not he had really cleared the dungeon instead of escaping. Only he wanted to answer something when he heard Loki's voice. She told him to accept the challenge to fight. Tsukasa didn't want to stand out, but Loki ordered him to fight again. She was very bored and wanted to perform. She told Toto to bring his buddies to the fight, then Kisaragi can show everyone who's boss. The boy agreed that this needed to be ended once and for all. He wanted to teach them a lesson too. Then out of the blue, he said he was accepting Toto's challenge. But on the condition that Toto takes his buddies with him. Don't let anyone complain afterward. That amused Loki a lot, but she found ordinary fighting boring, so she suggested adding details. Tsukasa said that if he wins, he should leave the Hoshigan Guild and approve the creation of a new guild. He should also get behind Hoshigan and stop obstructing any of her endeavors. The girl was surprised by such a demand from Kirasagi. She hadn't expected it to affect her at all. It made Todo very angry, but he accepted the demand, for he was sure he wouldn't lose. Afterward, they went to the training ground on the grounds of Tengetsu Academy. Tsukasa suggested that whoever falls first will be considered the loser. Toto agreed. He was sure it definitely wouldn't be someone from his team. Without hesitation, they began to fight. Each wanted to prove his superiority as soon as possible. Toto immediately utilized his fire control skill. But that reception didn't do Kirasagi the slightest bit of damage. That's when Yoshimura stepped in. He decided to use his skill, Bogatir Force. But Kirasagi was only waiting for that. He planned to get his hands on his skill. The guy managed to dodge his punch and make contact with him in the meantime. After that, Inu decided to join the battle, using his lightning strike skill. But even this blow Tsukasa was able to withstand without any problems. Everything was going according to his plan. Toto wanted Kirasagi to be left in ashes. He was serious about finishing him off. And then he used Firestorm, one of his most powerful skills. Hoshigan saw the seriousness of this confrontation and so she was very worried about Tsukasa. Toto continued to consider his opponent a loser and said that he would regret his existence in his next life. And his surprise was unparalleled when Kisaragi emerged from the fire unharmed. 
for he thought the guy was already dead. Even Loki watching everything, thought that using flames against Kirasagi was a ridiculous idea. She told the guy to keep fighting and not to give up under any circumstances. But he wasn't going to lose this fight. He was going to win. Suddenly, Yoshimura was rushing at him with all his might. He shared Toto's desire to destroy the boy. But at this moment, Kirasaga seized the opportunity and activated the skill he had obtained. Godly strength. No one on the practice field expected such a slick reception from a guy. And he threw Yoshimura very far back at this point, using his own skill against him. Inu and Toto were really scared for their buddy. They couldn't even imagine such a thing. Toto was even more eager to destroy the enemy with his own hands. But everything was going according to Kisaragi's plan. He had gotten rid of one opponent and couldn't wait to finish off the rest. 